Berninski and good evening uh, members of the board. The staff at Starkweather are committed to supporting the academic success and social emotional well-being of all the students. Embedded in the program are experiences for students to narrow their ideas for a career and develop the skills necessary to pursue, pursue the career and or admission to the college of their choosing. Here to share the highlights of the Starkweather School Improvement uh, Plan is Principal Mr. Kevin Lane. Hello, thank you so much for having me tonight and uh, really uh, want to thank you for supporting uh, the Starkweather program when you talk about the positive things uh, that are going on in this district. Uh, we are really fortunate to have a supported program like Starkweather uh, that supports the needs of students that have not been successful um, at the park. Um, so I also want to thank uh, those teachers. We have a couple of representatives here tonight. Um, and the rest of our support staff that does such an amazing job of supporting our students at Starkweather. Um, you know, and, and years ago, a student asked me, uh, would I want my child going to Starkweather? And I th they, their expectation, I think, was that, no, 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 I don't want my kid going to school like this. And my answer, 100% honestly, was I would love for my students to go to a school like Starkweather. The only concern I would have is so many of our students have been through so much before they get to us. And I don't want, I would not want any child to have to go through what some of our students have been through uh, on that path. Um, knowing that, because some of you have not been to Starkweather and, and, and I have not had a chance to present to the board uh, for a couple of years. This is actually my first time uh, with classes. Uh, and <laughs> uh, that Starkweather is a calm, caring environment. Um, we are just a different and alternative path to success. It is not a disciplinary tool. It is not a uh, easy way to get a diploma. It is really an alternative path to success. And it worked. Um, so some of the highlights of this year, uh, we, we, created, we worked with uh, students, staff, and parents uh, to create a new mission and belief statement. Uh, I'm not gonna read you all of it, but the, the mission is life skills that last, last a lifetime. Uh, we took a lot of time this fall uh, talking with staff, talking with parents in person and through surveys and talking with students and gathering ideas. Actually, two out of our three belief statements and our mission statement uh, were not created by staff initially. They were from either a student or a parent. I'm not sure which one necessarily, um, but I know they were created by students and parents, uh, not just staff up. Um, goals and objectives uh, for our program and these are pretty standard um, as we look at our data uh, we do need to improve in all our academic areas um, we want to thrive in a culturally diverse society to be college career ready that's really the key at Starkweather and, and throughout the district I understand but at Starkweather it's really focused on college and career ready being ready for what's next uh, not just getting through high school High school diploma is great, and of course that is a goal for all of our students, uh, but to make sure that they are, all of our students are college and career ready when they do walk across that stage. Um, some strategies and activities across the content areas. Um, mental health support, I know Dr. Mara did mention that before. Um, <coughs> <go. laughs> okay. um, that uh, we are really trying to support our students' mental health, feeling good about themselves, the ability to overcome barriers. Um, ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences, as a training um, and how adverse childhood experiences affect students even in the infant stages. And it's been really interesting to learn. I'm part of the team that's been going to the training and then we're gonna train our teachers um, once we get the training on how that affects students and that really they are, some of our people in our society and, and our young people are somewhat hardwired to uh, not react in a way that we would want them to under stressful situations. Uh, they'll shut down or lash out uh, <coughs> without any knowledge that they're doing that. And they just need a chance to calm down and, and, and be resilient and then we're gonna teach them how to be resilient. And that's something that our you know, counseling and social work staff has been able to do and now our entire staff <coughs> has been working and next year we're really gonna focus on teaching our students to be resilient, to get through those paths. Um, of course, we're going to uh, follow the PCCS curriculum and instruction strategies. A number of our teachers, uh, including some that are sitting in this room, uh, <laughs> Kim Del Propasto, has been part of the uh, district curriculum overview and adjustments and changes and, and realigning benchmarks. Uh, career focus across the curriculum. Uh, we have a uh, partnership with Michigan Works through Jobs for Michigan Graduates, as well as the Prime Initiative that many of you uh, were at the other day. And 
to infuse those career skills in every part of our uh, curriculum, whether it's English, math, they can write about their careers, they can uh, f look at what their career is going to give them uh, from a financial standpoint. Uh, Competency-based grading is the other thing, which is a, a model that the uh, Michigan Department of Education has really been pushing lately, uh, which is making sure that every student knows everything they need to do. Um, it's the idea of if you have somebody building an airplane, if they get 90% of that airplane built, you don't want to fly in that airplane. So all of our students, when they complete a course, they complete every part of that course. Uh, flex, flexing schedules to maximize credits. Of course, as we said, our students, their goal is they want to graduate, and we want them to be college career ready. So sometimes if a schedule is not working for students, if they're taking six classes, or even we can take seven classes at Starkweather right now, and they're only doing well in three or four of them, we can condense their schedule, at least for the semester, to maximize and make sure that they complete some of their classes rather than try to pass seven classes and wind up failing everything. Building those successes a little bit at a time, and then eventually there are mechanisms in our program where they can catch up on their credits and start going faster when they're ready. Uh, earlier I mentioned the mental health supports. Uh, we're creating a mental health team. Uh, we're about to have our first real formal meeting. Uh, with our counselors, social workers, we have a few teachers who are being trained and administrators. <coughs> so I mentioned we're going to work on the ACEs, resilience, uh, self-regulation. We have a teacher who's kind of become an expert on self-regulation, um, which is just the ability to calm down, uh, alleviate anxiety. Um, he's done a lot of work, and I act as, was, as well with him, um, on helping students work with deal, deal with their test anxiety that they come up with and just any type of anxiety it helps with. Um, and we've been looking at where can we infuse mental health supports within the curriculum itself. Of course, psychology classes, um, but within the writing, uh, within social studies, there's a lot of different places and we're gonna be really working to infuse it throughout the curriculum so every student isn't looking at, oh, this is one more thing we gotta do. I'm having anxiety, so I gotta go to this thing after school. We don't want it to be that, we don't want it to seem like a penalty. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, mentioned before the Prime Initiative. Uh, this is as we look at our career focus in our school. Uh, last time I was up here, we talked a lot about our Jobs for Michigan grads uh, a couple years ago with Michigan Works. This is a partnership for those of you who weren't at the be able to be at the kickoff with uh, seven industry partners, um, and we are infusing this again in a number of different courses. For example, we have a biology our biology class during an evolution lesson taught the evolution of a manufacturing product evolution of how to build a toy. Um, so to see how that um, process works, uh, we're working on a field trip for next year uh, with economics class and seeing a product from start to finish. And that'll include a visit to the facilities. Uh, our partners are really anxious for our, to get students out to the facilities. Uh, they're also opening it up to uh, our CTE students from the park or other students interested in the park. Uh, we're looking at, uh, we're working with the partners on how to infuse the practical skills into different courses, such as chemistry, math, measurement, um, and, and the processes that they go through, and infuse that into class. And of course, that is things we will share with the entire district. Um, we have a, a senior seminar class that we've had uh, for longer than I've been at Starkweather. And it's a career focus class and a goal setting class. And part of the career focus section, we're gonna have one of our sections that's gonna be focused on uh, earning industry certifications and precision measurement instruments. Um, and then eventually we'll have a second section, a follow up with advanced measurement instruments, which will be actually trained by the employees of our partners. Um, on the horizon uh, with the Prime program, we're gonna continue to align curriculum with our partners' needs. Um, again, that real life, that why of, of teaching and learning. Um, adapting some of our school facilities. They, the prime partners have uh, agreed to donate hundreds of thousands of dollars in equipment, and we do have to do some uh, facility modifications to do that, to install those things. And then uh, also there is funding within that uh, partner donation to provide summer and after school opportunities for our students throughout the district. Uh, just some accolades in general from Starkweather. These have been pretty consistent over the years. 66% um, of our graduates enroll in post-secondary programs. That's been pretty consistent over the years. And those are just the ones that are in state. Obviously, those are the ones we can track. It's not the number of applications. These are students actually enrolled uh, through the tracking systems. We also know we do have some that enroll out of state as well. 
Um, most of those are at the community college and some of the area vocational programs as well, uh, such as MIAT. And um, we also have a few students every year that enroll at the university. Over 25% of our graduates each year, we usually graduate about 60 students, over 25% uh, of those earn some type of college scholarship. Most will support at least a year of uh, community college. Uh, a number of those students will earn multiple scholarships. Some years that number has been as high as 40%, just depending on how many students um, earn multiple scholarships and, and reach out to uh, other areas in the community. 20% uh, of our current Starkweather students enroll in post-secondary level courses each year. And a big part of that is our collaboration with Schoolcraft College. Um, and Kim is here still, <laughs> she runs that program on collaboration with the uh, faculty at Schoolcraft. Uh, we have a new program this year, Graduation Alliance. No matter how much we give to students and how much we do and how much we support students, sometimes life gets in the way of school. Uh, some students, uh, school cannot be a top priority, even third, fourth, or fifth priority. They just can't get to school on a regular basis. Some of the reasons that happens is, is due to health barriers or uh, a student who came and got an award from the board just a few weeks ago, um, he had to go to work full time. He had to move out of his house for really legitimate reasons and uh, now has to work full time. He is in this program now. What Graduation Alliance is, is it's a online, 100% online program with Michigan Department of Education approved courses. Students are still Plymouth Canton Community School students. Um, the counseling staff, uh, teacher consultants, and myself uh, monitor the students and their progress uh, through, through monthly reports and we have an online dashboard where we can see them. Um, and it provides a lot of extra supports beyond the traditional in-school online programs that, that we have. Uh, Graduation Alliance provides live mentoring and testing at the local library. So they have to come, they do have to take their final exam in person so we know they're taking the final exam and they've been doing the course. Um, so they take that at the local library. There's multiple meetings each week that they can come to, they can choose from. Some of our students that have moved out of the area will actually meet with students that are generally from another school. We have a young lady that uh, moved down to Southgate and she didn't want to enroll in a new school. She loves our program, wants to stay connected to our program. So she is actually meeting in uh, Wyandotte. That's where her closest meeting is. Um, they have an online, highly qualified teacher for each course, 24 seven online tutor support, it's flexibility, but with deadlines. That's actually a quote from the young lady from Dearborn that came in. She, we still do the Michigan Merit exam testing with our students, and they came in, and she came in, and I asked her how she liked it. She said, it's great, it's, you know, they can be flexible with my life, what I need to do in my life, but there's still deadlines that keep me on track and keep me going towards graduation. Uh, we currently have about 85 students in this program. About half of those students are students that went directly from Starkweather because of different needs or um, barriers that they weren't able to overcome at Starkweather and went directly into the program. About half, the other half of the students are students that dropped out of mostly from Plymouth Canton schools but other area districts as well um, many years ago. And they're 20, 21 years old and they just don't want to get into a, a classroom with a bunch of high school students and most of them are working full time as well and uh, either supporting their family or supporting themselves. And that's all I have for this evening. And I do want to, before I uh, end and ask for questions, just want to remind you, in, in, uh, our graduation is Thursday, I believe it's June 13th. I didn't look at the calendar before, but <laughs> uh, the last Thursday of the school year and at Salem High School. And I hope you all can attend. You'll all be getting invitations. It is, if you have not been before, um, I really suggest, it's a, it, I know it's a busy time of year, but it is a really worthwhile event um, and bring your Kleenex with you in a positive way. Positive Kleenex. Any any questions or comments? Questions? Yeah, I don't know if I'm calling on them. <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm, I'm a huge supporter of the program. I think it's fantastic. Of this graduation alliance, does, does the graduation rate still, is it similar for those students? Um, their statistics are really good uh, offhand. I can't quote them. Um, and it's a brand new program. Okay. So we're gonna see how it does with our program. You know, they've got their national statistics, they're a national program. I see. Um, some districts have been really happy with their with it, and I think so far it seems to be going pretty well. I mean, they're being successful with students that we weren't able to be. So in, um, are our teachers involved in that program or no. that process? Okay. No, once, once they leave the program, they generally do not come to the building except for the testing. 
Um, you know, they can come in. Some of them come and see the counselor, social worker still once in a while, their teacher consultant if they're um, an IEP student. Uh, we definitely aren't cutting them off. We're maintaining that relationship with the students that, that wish to do that or need that support. Um, our record secretary, uh, Ms. Vaca, is absolutely terrific in, um, you know, she looks at the report every month and, and the students that she's, she knows, she reaches out to them if they're struggling or are not doing as well as we hope, uh, as well as the counselor and myself and uh, the dean of students. Uh, so it's, it, it seems to be a real positive so far. We'll continue to examine it. It goes on. As I said, some districts have not been happy with it, but I think they were more hands off and we're continuing to treat them. You know, they are our students. Great. And we want to make sure that they're ready for the next step as well. That's awesome. And I, and I will say they do a night. They have a course required course that really is kind of like our senior seminar course. So they are really looking at their post secondary outcomes as well. Great, that's excellent. So the other question I have was, do we see students that move into the program at Spark Starkweather and then move back to the park, or is it generally um, that they move to, to Starkweather and, and and stay there? Yeah, uh, they can come back to the park. Uh, it. We do have usually two or three a year now. Okay. Uh, most students, we do have a lot of students every year that come to Starkweather and say, oh yeah, I'm gonna come, our, come here, catch up on my credits and go back. What happens is they get to Starkweather, they enjoy they it, it, they're successful, they enjoy the relationships, you know, the wonderful staff that we have, and they want to stay. Okay. Um, I have to say, honestly, some of the moving back is parent motivated, or the um, biggest thing is if they're involved in an after school activity at the park, while they're at Starkweather, they can still be involved in that, but without transportation to get back, or even if they have, you know, transportation, it's just it's, it's not as convenient. And uh, as I said, mo most will go back if they're in a sports team or uh, really active in a club. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay. Member Lazarowitz. Yeah, I got a question. So it's like from ninth to twelfth grade, or what's the grades? Yeah, it, it is 10th to 12th grade students the the to transfer to Starkweather a student we do want them to try and go to the park for one year uh, we do accept students out of district so we want them to go to traditional <laughs> high school for one year because obviously there's things that the park offers that we absolutely can't offer just because of size in the hopes that they'll get connected uh, with something at the park there's also because we have adult ed also um, and we don't have a lot, actually this year we didn't have any adults in the high school program, but in the, most years we have like three or four adult students in our high school program, and we can't schedule adult students with anybody who's under the age of 16. Okay. So students have to be at least 15 on September 1, and um, so we can continue to schedule them and, and support them. And there's also a certain degree of maturity. It, it does change the culture if you've got first year high school students. It really does change the culture of the school and the, and the needs, and I think it, you know, it's it's not it's it's good for our students that have not been successful to park to be in a place where there are not younger students. Okay, and you said there's 85 uh, students at the park, or at the uh, uh, there's 85 Stark students in the graduation alliance. The Starkweather brick and mortar program. There's about 200. Okay, and there's 85 that are going to graduate in June. Uh, we usually have about 60, 60 that 60 that actually complete that last those final few credits. And the ones um, that don't, do they come back later? Or? Most do come back. Uh, with the Graduation Alliance program this year, you know, some of those students went to Graduation Alliance just to finish up those last couple credits because okay. they were working. A lot of them, you know, they, they'd start, they could work full time and just finish up that last class or two and they wouldn't have to stay the whole semester to finish with the class. Because the Graduation Alliance, if they work hard, they can finish a class in, in a month or less. Life happens, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so they, they were, a lot of students are ready to move on with their life. Okay, all right, thank you. Anybody else? Um, I just wanted to um, say, if anybody knows me, I'm always kind of skeptical of mission and belief statements, and I have to say, I'm really impressed with yours, and I love them. So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to put in another plug for the Starkweather graduation. Um, those of us who have been before know it's a, just a very moving ceremony and very worthwhile to go to. So. It really is. Yep. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you.